Summiting mountains to raise awareness. This is the mission of six Kimberley women who have previously summited Mount Kilimanjaro and Everest Base Camp on their radar. This weekend, the Kill Girls, Killy Girls rather, as the movement is known, organized a short 15 kilometer hike around the banks of the Far River to raise awareness about lupus and gender based violence. A group of over 50 enthusiasts braved the morning cold to hike along the banks of the river in Buckley West. These hikes, which include bushy terrain, crossing rivers, is meant to raise more awareness and funds to address social issues. The organizers say their purpose for climbing mountains is to assist non-profit organizations that are currently trying to make the lives of others better. Well, we decided to bring people together to just raise awareness in terms of GBV and lupus. But GBV comes a long way. We, when we went on Kilimanjaro, we, that was one of our main uh, reasons why we climbed the mountain. So we just thought as ladies and maybe to encourage people to start being active through uh, um, campaigns, uh, awareness campaigns. The hike attracted many novice hikers. Some struggled to keep up, while others were tempted to turn back when it was time to cross the river. But participants say being part of such campaigns is bigger than minor discomforts. Uh, I'm excited because it will be my first time hiking. Actually, I'm part of the Kili Girls team and I'm always exercising. It's part of, of my routine. So it will be my first time hiking, so I find it very adventurous and excited because they are doing it for the community. The group of six has recruited 20 others who will be summiting Cathedral Peak in the Dragonsburg later this month to raise funds for people living with lupus. Lupus is a disease that affects joints, skin, kidneys, heart, lungs and brain and has no cure. Margaret Mutibi, SABC News, Kimberley. So as uh, we observe, celebrate Women's Month in the country, we focus on women who've made inspiring strides in their areas of expertise. And today we're joined by Nofundo um, Goi, a former educator who has become the group chief executive of Ikebele to group. She has amassed millions or rather several accolades in the world of business as a founder of the group. The business has grown to have over 130 branches in KwaZulu-Natal, Gauteng and the United Kingdom. Nomfundo Ngoi uh, joins us now to talk about, you heard me say millions, so clearly this is within your future or it's already in existence. <laughs> so please tell us all about it. Um, good evening at the studio and good evening to all the viewers at home. Yes, it is a great business that we are doing. God has blessed us with Ikebule um, to where we get to help a lot of people. We have more than half a million clients that get help from us. And also through our foundation where we spend all those millions we're talking about to give back to communities where we service and to do a lot of projects uh, for the communities. I'm interested in how I believe you founded this business, it's a bit to funerals 13 years ago. And I don't know if, I don't know if that uh, figure is still current, if it's correct, but you will correct me if it's not. How did the idea come about? And I believe that you've managed to uh, turn it into a lifestyle company now. I saw a gap in the industry um, and, and in the industry, then I said, let me just create a burial scheme that uh, um, afford that is very affordable and also that um, provide dignified send-offs for families and also that just not just collect premiums but gives back to communities as well um, which is what we're doing through our foundation mm. but I, i'm just wondering was there anything in particular an incident in your life that inspired you and um as a woman, is this something that you would typically find a lot of women involved in this kind of business, funeral parlors? When I started the um, WLA 13 years ago, there weren't many females that were in the industry. Maybe a few that were there, they had just inherited the businesses, but I started it from scratch. And that uh, motivated me a lot as well, because I walked into this uh, men's industry, there was so, 
male dominated and also culture you know our culture it doesn't even allow women even near the grave um, and and it was it was a difficult one people were scared of death but i said let me just start something different let me just do something where there aren't many women so i entered into this space it wasn't an easy journey i i i, I just want to say it's been a very long difficult journey for me in the industry but we've made it 13 years later and, and just speaking about reform what were the lessons that you've learned along the way in order to bring more business and I, i'm not even just talking about innovation but even speaking about bringing in more women customers but uh, employees and partnerships to be able to be a part of this journey that you have undertaken Yes, as a brand, it's over to we employ a lot of females in our brand and youth as well. Um, it's, it's, it, 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 it prides us to see how we, we, we promote um, youth employment as well. And, and it, it, it's been a very um, a long journey for us and because we, we had to start from products where we're just bearing people to being innovative, coming up with products that way, like to change the lifestyle of the people, mm. to bring, to add value, and to, add, to, 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 to make the lives of the people better and also value for money as well. Mm. What would you consider value for money in this day and age, especially given the challenges that particularly your sector is going through with the load shedding, the... Um, jump huge jump in overheads because of the uh, various equipment the cold chain that you would have to maintain are you able to speak to us about it H how difficult has it been and also to gain trust as you say there are various traditional cultural practices that would prevent somebody from saying i trust a woman with this kind of job and for you to say we actually are bringing <laughs> that uh, femininity aspect into the job to actually we're, we're natural carers and nurturers value for money for our brand as it's double -edged. yes there is a lot of value for money because of the products that we offer you know these days people they want to know what am i going to get you can't just be paying a premium for 10 years and you haven't even claimed and you're not getting anything back. So we've got a lot of lifestyle products that we've added, discounts for them when they go to buy in shops. There's a lot that we've done because we realize that the economy as well is so bad and people are not affording a lot of things for groceries to be affordable. We offer such for our clients so that at least they can get some value while they are just paying all these premiums to us. Yes, load shedding has been a problem and it's a problem for everyone. One. But as a brand, we are ready for it. We've got generators and, and, and in, in our offices. We've, we've got uh, the, the, the right equipment to make sure that we are open at all times and we, we, we fight against this load shedding. We can still offer the best of, of, of our services with load shedding. Hmm. Load shedding is here to stay. We just to learn to live with it and to work around it. Hmm. So you have uh, this uh, foundation, Kibaletu Foundation, which uh, uh, is to improving the lives of particularly underprivileged communities. And I was just looking, I mean, we have various pictures of your business, of you, and I was looking at those uh, wonderful luxury cars. And there's a criticism against black people saying that we spend way too much money on funerals and not on living and as you say this is what you're trying to do with the business so as a financial service provider how do you then communicate to say some of these underprivileged communities that you are supporting that this is how you can rethink your way around life living and death it's very important that the life we live a very good life sometimes when we're living even when you get when it's a send off be sent off the right way you can't just be sent off as if you are just nothing you need that dignified send off and you need to prepare for it through the policies that we offer which is very very important and and with the with the affordable premiums that we have 
um, that we offer to our clients. Anybody can afford all those luxury cars that you're talking about. They don't have to spend a lot to get those cars. And we make sure that is what we are about as a brand. We care for our clients. We care about how much they spend uh, for, for their funerals so that they don't just feel uh, as if it's a burden to have a funeral uh, policy, but it's something they need to be prepared so that when they leave uh, this earth, they are they get good send-offs. And just tell me a little bit more as we end off about your mentorship program. I believe you've personally mentored over 100 young girls through the Rota Girls Initiative. Yes, the, uh, we've, one of them, one of the things that we do as a foundation is the Rota Girls. It's a very good project where we've managed to produce... Um, Sorry, where we've managed to produce um, um, a lot of girls, professionals now, some are doctors, some are pilots, some are, 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 are accountants, different uh, professions, because we mentor these girls, we just want to teach them that they can do more in their lives. Whatever they're good at, we try and nurture it and, and bring out the best in them through the whole program where we have workshops, where we open opportunities for them, um, which really helps them. And because some of them really, they come from very uh, poor backgrounds. And also another one that is very, very new and very good, it's the Canoe Academy that we have. We chose a very different sport there because mm. not a lot of our black uh, uh, kids uh, do canoe, canoeing. And, and, and just two of our girls, they are going to Poland to, to, to participate in the, uh, in the Olympics because of that program. Uh, they're living now in September, which is a very good uh, uh, one as well. And it's so, so different. And, and just imagine that one, we had a security guy who used to work for us and that security loved canoeing. And then we just brought him in and said, start and let's create an academy. And it's really, really working and it's beautiful. And I really appreciate you telling us uh, that uh, all efforts to uh, break uh, barriers, whether they be race, gender, class, uh, amazing work. Well done yes. to you. Wishing you all the best. That is our uh, profile interview for Women's Month. Nomfundo Mkoyi. She is uh, the founder and uh, head of uh, the group uh, that is Ikabele uh, to Funerals. So she found that 13 years ago. Thank you so much for speaking to us.